So someone recently asked me, what is success and how do we achieve it? And that's what provoked this video. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And I hope this video finds you well. This week is all about success. What is success? Why are we obsessed about it? And how do we attain it? So looking at Google, success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. It could also be the good or bad outcome of an undertaking. So under my definition, I would also include one other thing, which is this. Success requires intent. If I were to roll a six on a die, it wouldn't really mean anything unless that six was what I wanted to have happen. So there is an intent behind that action. And that is a requirement for success. So today we are going to be talking about is there such a thing as true success? And you might be surprised. So for me, the way that I look at it is if there is success, there has to be a possibility of failure. The second is that if there is true success, then there has to be partial success. So kind of on a continuum. So for there to be true success, there has to be three possible outcomes. Either there has to be failure, partial success, and true success. Whereas the way I look at it, the entire question is a little bit of a misnomer. You see, I suspect that the person who asks this is actually wondering, is there such a thing as ultimate success? Where ultimate success means that every single success will lead towards it. So in this video, we're going to be addressing two points. The first point is, is there such a thing as ultimate success? And the second one is, where does the intent come from? Let's answer the easier question first, which is, is there such a thing as ultimate success? Here are my thoughts on it. For ultimate success to be a thing, you have to make sure that all your successful routes, all your successful ways will eventually point and gather towards it. So whatever it is that you are aiming to do, it has to ultimately point to this one thing. That is your ultimate success. So in order for this to be the case, number one, there cannot be more than one ultimate success. Otherwise, it will be ultimate successes, which is kind of a technicality, but I'll grant it that. The next thing is that all your paths to success have to head towards it. That's the second condition. And so if you can find a contrary path to success, then it means that there is no such thing as ultimate success. So as much as this idea of having ultimate success is very captivating and is something that has motivated mankind for a very long time, if it doesn't exist, then we are wasting our time trying to find that ultimate success. So let's address these two points. The first point, that there is only one possible success destination. If you really think about it, asking the question, what is ultimate success? Where is this destination? It's kind of like asking, what's the purpose of life? What's the purpose of existence? Why are we alive? It's kind of a hard question to answer. And for more information about that, you'll have to wait for the intent portion of this video. But let's talk about contradicting paths to success. Here's a really simple one. Two guys like the same woman, but only one of them can get her. The person who is able to end up with her would then be considered to be successful, whereas the other person would not be considered successful. And so if this is the case, then partnering up with this woman was never ultimate success to begin with, because only one person could attain it, whereas the ultimate success has to be something that every single person can strive towards. So now let's get playful. How many different kinds of successes are there in which there can be a contrary goal? Someone could aim to be a gold medalist. Being a gold medalist could be considered success, but not everybody can be a gold medalist. Therefore, it is not ultimate success because not everybody can attain it. Being married is not ultimate success because somebody may not desire it. You might even say that living may not even be ultimate success because there are individuals who are not necessarily so inclined. Having children is not necessarily the end all, because some people do not desire to have children. Being loved may not necessarily be ultimate success, because some people set out on paths that drive love away. Every single thing that we can consider success has a counter-success example. If this is the case, then there cannot be such a thing as ultimate success. If ultimate success is passing on to your version of the afterlife, 
then how about the people for whom your idea of the afterlife is not their idea of the afterlife? How do you reconcile that? You may consider yourself successful if you enter your afterlife, but what if it's a different one? Would you consider yourself successful? Maybe not. And so that may not be the ultimate success either. My point is this, there is no such thing as ultimate success. For everything that you may consider as a success, somebody else may consider it as a failure. And therefore there is no pleasing everyone here. Ultimate success does not exist. So if ultimate success does not exist, then how do we tell where success comes from? So that's where the intent actually comes in, and I'll address the second point. Intent comes from four different sources. The first one being yourself. The second being other people. The third being other sentient beings. And the fourth one being non-sentient things. Let's go through each of them. Your first source of intent for success is yourself. What you set out to achieve, you manage to accomplish. And it ultimately boils down to this. And it ultimately boils down to this. What benefits us? And therein lies the study of morality versus ethics, which we will cover next week. But fundamentally, for us, success is whatever ultimately benefits us. The second source of intent is from other people. And for this one, it is also very similar to self. It is what ultimately benefits them. So when you combine yourself and other people, you will eventually come up with the idea of ethics. Not covering that today. The third source of intent is from other sentient beings. So examples of these would include gods, aliens, and ghosts. Unfortunately, there's no conclusive proof that these exist. Therefore, if you are living a life wherein these things exist, you may need to reconsider because other people may not share your idea of success. And the last source of intent is from non-sentient things. These include evolution, artificial intelligence, and concepts. With this particular category, success is more of whether these things accomplish their ultimate end goal, which may vary very wildly from what we would actually want. It is an impersonal and unfeeling process that gets to where it wants to go without taking you into consideration. And therefore, in a way, you could say that this is the most objective form of success because there is no personal bias at work here. At the same time, you may not agree with the outcomes they are driving towards. And while this video is shorter, the next two videos are going to cover a lot more ground. The next video to come out is why are we so obsessed over success? And then after that, I'm going to point out a few examples of success that you may want to take into consideration for your own life. Do you believe there's such a thing as ultimate success? Do you have any disagreements with the categories I pointed out? If you do, let me know down in the comment sections below. This is one portion which I'm still not very sure that I have a good grasp on. And so if you out there have a better understanding of this topic, feel free to let me know. I'm in this process to learn together with you. If you found this video useful or interesting for you, please consider hitting the like button. If you think somebody else would find this video interesting, do consider sharing it with them. And if you like more content about how to handle multiple interests, multiple relationships, and multiple approaches of finance, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. My name is Gerald, and this is Multi-Loving Model. Be happy in diversity. Cheers.